Let's kick off with a yarn from Peter Van Onselen today in the Daily Mail. Now, he's reporting that Anthony Albanese is looking to call an early election on Saturday the 31st of August, which would be in an effort to avoid a September interest rate rise. Now, the writs for an early election, which is, of course, the official document that authorises an election, that has to be issued 33 days before polling day, which means the PM has until the last weekend of this month, that's July the 27th and 28th, to pull the pin if he's going to do it. Joe, you have an <laughs> ear of the Prime Minister. No, I don't know is, about that. is this um, nonsense? Well, look, it's certainly not what he told me publicly and uh, put it on the front page that he was going to go the distance or in, in that vicinity, so the first half of next year. Um, obviously, in elections and, and in politics, people change, things change, circumstances change. The, um, the, the resignation of Fatima Payment obviously is a big factor and it would be a tactical, it would be a smart tactical move to go early before the Muslim vote movement has a chance to get its act together, get candidates in place, raise money, etc, etc. Having said that, while it would be a tact good tactical move, I think it would be a strategic mistake. Firstly, there's no guarantee that the RBA won't rise raise right raise rates in August. Um, it's certainly probably more likely that by September they will have done it. Yeah. But I think well, the problem is they'd have two on the Some books people are putting it 50-50, they'll do it August, and there seems to be mm -hmm. some kind of 3D chess that, well, and the RBA would be reluctant to raise rates during an election campaign. Now, the RBA, upon hearing that, thinking, well, that in itself would be politicising us. Yeah. And so if we didn't, if we were looking like we were scared to raise rates during an election campaign because we were political, then we'd better do it to show yeah. that we're impartial. And they've done it twice before. And in both those t cases, the government has fallen. Um, the other thing is just Queensland. Like, we're seeing, you know, double-digit swings of, you know... 10, even up to sort of 20% potentially. That was in a by-election in, in Queensland. But safe Labor seats have gone down in Queensland already. Um, that's not where Labor is planning to win the election and pick up seats, obviously. But it could lose seats that were unthinkable because Stephen Miles is so on the mm -hmm. nose. So that is very high risk. So already, before you get to anything else, you've got the risk of a rate rise during the election campaign. The fact that even if you don't get one, everyone knows the next move is going to be up. Um, and, and you've got a whole bunch of Queenslanders waiting with brickbats to just smash the bejesus out of the next Labor candidate that comes their way. Do you want to go to an election in that environment on the on the basis that, hey, it's not so bad now, but things are only going to get worse so quickly, let's have the poll. I, I, don't, I think that's a hard sell, but... You know. Yeah, I, I, I guess, Lucy, I though, that the thing is that if you're going to have two interest rate rises, which seems quite likely, mm -hmm. um, whether you have the election now or the election in May, that damage is going to be done. Right. So, so what would there be to lose by going now instead of waiting until next May, except for the months that you could potentially not have in government? It's true, but I think that he has, you know, pursuant to all of the things that Joe has referenced, we're also staring down the barrel of, you know, some serious economic frailties going on in the country mm. now, right? You've got to look at inflation, you've got to look at so many things, which expert economists... I mean, you and I were talking about this earlier. Expert economists earlier this week already predicted that inflation isn't going to level out to the position that it needs to by, at the very least, June next year. Mm. You've also got 127,000 families, which Mr Dutton rightfully brought up in Question Time earlier this week, on... Uh, on hardship plans, right? They can't pay their electricity bills. So we're staring down the barrel of so many other things that are, you know, that are waging in this, dis the, you know, waging into this discussion. Things like also the energy debate, right? Where are we sitting on that? The, the calls in the last few weeks, that the fact that we're going to need to raise our, uh, our gas usage and things like that now, their refusal, the Labor Party's absolute refusal to even enter into a discussion about nuclear when we're seeing that there is an appetite for it. I mean, 2022, we already saw a thousand Australians were polled and they actually said, hey, we actually are in favour of moving towards nuclear energy. So there are so many things on the agenda here that Anthony Albanese needs to stare down the barrel of the drama with Senator Payment, as Joe rightfully pointed out. Now, I mean, I think he has to go early. I don't think he has a choice, to be honest, because he's just going to continue to lose more credibility as time goes on. Well, I'll, we'll get to nuclear in a minute. It, but it's interesting, Kel, I mean, I was saying for the better part of a, well, a year ago now that uh, as soon as there was an interest rate reduction, Albanese would go to an early election yeah. because it, it's... We can now sell it as, look, we've done the hard yards, we're, we're on the way back up now, you've helped us get here, we've done the hard work, we need your support to finish the job. It's clear now that that ain't 
going to happen, which means that he has not a lot to go to an election with and say he has done. Yep. Because he didn't, he, he didn't succeed with The Voice. Yes. He yes. succeeded with very little else. Uh, all he's managed to do is, like, change stage three tax cuts. And, and free a lot and, of people into the community who shouldn't have correct, been freed into correct. the community. So, yes. so, so what... If he goes early... What's he actually going to sell as here's the reason why you should re-elect me? Well, when he's thinking about it, bear in mind, he, lo- he reads the polls. He's thinking about, OK, after the next election, we'll be in minority government. Wouldn't it go- be good to be in minority government sooner rather than later? <laughs> They're not going to think like that. Uh, the other thing is there is some evidence that the public don't like early elections. Remember, let me met- drop two names... Rishi Sunak chose an <laughs> yes. early election. Uh, <laughs> Emmanuel Macron chose an early election. How did it work out for them? I, I think... I, I really think it would be very difficult for them to choose to go down that path right now with the, the polls exactly the way they are. Mm. Now, I, and it, I, I, this is really unkind, but Peter Van Onselen is the man who, in the 2019 general election, said, Labor will win and you can keep the video tape, keep playing it and be saying <laughs> Labor will win. And we did! <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. And, you know, who his sources are, where it's coming from, Caroline, who knows?